An average person types at a rate of 150 characters per minute when copying a page of text. Some do this much faster, some, like me, do this much slower. In, in my case, a big portion of those 150 characters are backspaces to correct the many mistakes I made. I'm a horrible typist. Today, I want to talk to you about replication proteins, little machines inside the cells of our bodies that do a much better job of copying the genetic information stored in our DNA molecules. I'm showing here a schematic depiction of a cell, a cell like the billions and billions you have yourself inside your body. In the nucleus in the cell, here depicted in this little gray area, resides the DNA, which contains the genetic blueprint of the cells and, by extension, of our bodies. In order for our bodies to remain healthy and, and keep growing, cells need to divide. Some cells in our body stop dividing early on in life, like the neurons in our brain, and other cells keep on dividing throughout our lifetime, like the cells in skin and, and bone marrow. Before this cell division takes place, the genomic content of our cells, all the genetic information that is stored in the DNA inside cell nuclei needs to be copied, needs to be replicated, so that each daughter cell after cell division uh, receives each its own copy of a full complement of, of DNA. This is quite a formidable challenge if you realize that the DNA of a single cell contains six billion base pairs, where a base pair is a single letter in the DNA alphabet, six billion base pairs. For comparison, the entire Harry Potter series contains six million characters, which is a thousand times less than the amount of information stored on the DNA in just one single cell. Now, before cell division and replication actually happens, there's a, a couple of types of protein, protein machineries, that land on the DNA and start copying it at a very high rate, for some organisms as fast as a thousand base pairs, a thousand characters per second. And they do this at such a high accuracy that these protein machines only on average make a single typo for the entire Harry Potter series. And if you think about line scale, the entire six billion characters of the DNA content of one single cell can be put in a line and you'll end up with two meters of DNA. And the following statistic I find is even more impressive. If you line up all the DNA that is replicated in all your cells in your body during your lifetime, you'll end up with a line that is one light year in length. That is the same as the distance between here and Pluto, times 1,000. <laughs> so this being a formidable challenge, this high accuracy and higher rate begs the question, how does this actually work at the molecular level? I'm showing you here a movie. This is a molecular animation made by a molecular animator called Drew Berry. He works at the WEHI, a medical research institute in Melbourne. And this is a movie that is based on the replication proteins of E. coli bacteria. And this is really the sum of many decades of work by many biologists and biochemists, one of which actually my colleague, uh, Professor Nick Dixon, here at, at UOW. What you see here is an unzipping protein, a protein that splits apart the two strands of a parental double-stranded DNA and splits it into two individual strands. And what you see here on the bottom and at the top are the two copier proteins. These are the proteins that put in the new letters of the DNA alphabet, and in the end, results in one double-stranded DNA molecule and a second double-stranded DNA molecule that can now be separated over the two daughter cells. This movie implies that we completely understand how these replication proteins work. Well, we don't. Even for a simple bacterial model system, we really don't understand all the molecular details. And for human systems, we're pretty much at a loss how exactly at a molecular level this process of replication works. So why is this important? DNA replications, or mistakes in DNA replication, can underlie a number of serious diseases, like Huntington's disease and, uh, and specific types of cancer. So we like to understand how these proteins work, but there's a quite a, a challenge underlying this question, and the challenge is that these proteins are exceedingly small. 
So what you see here schematically on the top left corner is a schematic depiction of a protein. A protein is the size of only a few nanometers, which is many thousands of times smaller than the size of a typical cell. And that itself is many thousands of times smaller than the size of a human body. To put this in perspective, the relative size of a protein compared to the human body is roughly the same as the relative size of a soccer ball compared to the entire planet Earth, with the soccer pitch having the same relative size roughly as a cell. Now, this is my big idea. We would like to build a microscope that is so sensitive that we can actually visualize how DNA replication works. We would like to make real-life movies of the actual molecular processes that these proteins use to copy DNA. So not an animation, just like the one I showed you, but really a movie that tells us exactly how, at a molecular level, the replication process takes place. So how do we do this? By using laser beams. So what we do is we take even smaller molecules, fluorescent molecules, and use those to tag the replication proteins. We can now use laser light, for example, the color green, and illuminate these small fluorescent tags attached to the replication proteins, and they will give light back, for example, in the color red. We can then use microscopes and sensitive CCD cameras to take pictures and movies of the fluorescence of these tagged replication proteins. One other thing we developed in our lab is the ability to take a long piece of DNA, a shoestring-shaped molecule at both ends, and mechanically stretch it and put it on our microscope. So now what we can do is we take an actual, real-life molecular movie of these fluorescently tagged replication proteins coming in, landing on one side of the DNA, and visualizing them doing their replication work as they go through the DNA. And that allows us to directly answer questions like, how fast are these replication proteins going? Are they pausing once in a while? And how long do they copy for before they fall off? All at a single molecule level. So we do this not just because we can, because trying to understand how these processes work at the molecular level has a direct impact on understanding disease mechanisms. And understanding at the molecular level how these diseases work allows us to come up with better treatment strategies. Often, when people have cancer or a genetic disorder, the origin of disease lies in mutations, and these mutations cause these proteins to misbehave at the molecular level. They're not doing their job as they're supposed to. So it is our aim to use these types of microscopy to see what is going on at the molecular level, accessing details that scientists so far haven't had access to. Also, the tools that we're developing have an immediate impact in medical diagnostics. The single molecule philosophy that we apply to our work, the sensitivity that we have is directly applicable to the same kind of challenge in medical diagnostics, where people use or need sensitive tools to detect disease markers. So, for example, DNA sequencing, a method that has been used for a few decades now, DNA sequencing is a technology that allows you to read out the exact sequence of the DNA alphabet. Sequencing is being used now to detect disease, but also to treat disease, as we'll hear in a, in a few minutes from my colleague, Professor Marie Ransom. But now people have been able to sequence DNA at the single molecule level, where we have the sensitivity to take a single piece of DNA and directly read out exactly what the sequences of the letters in that single piece of DNA. And this is a technology that is now being used already in medical centers around the world. So I hope to have convinced you that the work we do is aiming to understand at the molecular level what happens with the fundamental processes that underlie life. And that it has a direct impact on understanding disease mechanisms and hopefully will contribute to uh, developing better therapeutic strategies. UW is actually a fantastic place to do this kind of research. With its commitment to both basic and applied research, and with the fantastically many talented staff and students around us, I'm very convinced that the next few years will make great progress in understanding how these little molecular copies, copiers inside your body uh, work. I thank you for your attention.